Hey guys, how's it going? As I film this, it is currently Sunday, November 10th, 2019. Last night, AEW presented Full Gear, another pay-per-view, and AEW Wednesday Night Dynamite has been a solid show throughout the week. So leading up to this pay-per-view, would that, would that be able to live up to the same standard that Wednesday Night Dynamite has set and that their past pay-per-views have set? Uh, let's take a look. First match on the show was Britt Baker versus Bea Priestley. Uh, this was a solid match, nothing too special that st stood out about it. Uh, it seemed like Priestley carried Baker throughout the match, uh, but in the end, that was Baker who was actually able to pick up the win with a lockjaw. After that, Brandy Rhodes and Awesome Kong came out, came out after the match and kind of, attacked Priestley, uh, kind of attacked Priestley before cutting off a piece of her hair. Uh, so it looks like we got a storyline development going on there. Um, after that, we had Santana and Ortiz versus the Young Bucks. It was a fun match, really good match, a lot of uh, chaotic and fun stuff happening throughout. Uh, Santana and Ortiz actually had the Bucks in a, a combo. Boston Crab, Corey Special, Camel Clutch, which is pretty cool. There's also a spot where Nick Jackson missed on a kick and ended up hitting the post. And we kind of sell that throughout the rest of the bout. Um, Santana and Ortiz would actually hit the Street Sweeper on Nick for the win. However, after the match, Sammy Guevara came out to uh, help out well, on the post-match celebration and beatdown. But Rock and Roll Express's Ricky Morton was there and he was watching this match and he made the save in an unbelievable way. I gotta check this out. It was pretty funny, pretty cool. Uh, Morton showing he could still go. Uh, but yeah, in the end though, it was uh, Santana and Ortiz who got the win over the Young Bucks. After that, we had Pac versus Hangman Page. Another solid match uh, on this pay per view, especially when considering the quality that the tag team match before it was. Uh, this one was another good one. That was a unique move by Pac when he actually whipped the ropes into the face of Adam Hangman Page. And then there are a lot of high-risk spots. Uh, one of the highlights here was a fallaway slam from the top rope from Page to reverse human suplex from Pac, who then, uh, and then Pac was able to, uh, into, okay, let me restart that. Fallaway slam from the top rope from Page to reverse German suplex from Pac to a powerbomb from Page. Crazy sequence there. Uh, in the end, it was Pac who would eventually miss on a red arrow. This allowed uh, uh, Page to hit the dead eye for the win. So Adam Hangman Page is your winner over Pac here. After that, we had Sean Spears taking on Joey Janela. Uh, Janela started this match like a bat out of hell. He was going all out, balls to the wall to start it out. Uh, eventually, uh, Spears was able to counter a, a crossbody into a power slam. It was an okay match, still solid action throughout, but it ended when Spears was able to hit the C4 Death Valley Driver onto an exposed turnbuckle, as well as a spike power driver with the help of Tully Blanchard. Um, yeah, so that pretty much helped Spears get the win over Joey Janela in that match. Following that, we had the AEW Tag Team Championship match, SCU defending the belts against uh, Private Party and the Lucha Bros. Uh, this was a fun match. A lot of action, a lot of high-risk spots. Very exciting to watch. I liked it a lot. All six guys in this bout delivered. Um, SCU would eventually win the bout, and after the match, the Lucha Bros would come in and attack SCU, and then the lights came out, went out, and then when they came back on, there's another Lucha Brother in the ring, and it was later revealed to be Christopher Daniels. He is now back with SCU, returning from injury. And it looks like SCU, the three of them, are back together once again. So it should be interesting to see how this feud develops between them and the Lucha Brothers going forward. Now that Christopher Daniels is back. After that, we have the AEW Women's Championship match. Sakura versus Rio. It was a solid, ma a solid match that really played out the student versus teacher storyline. Uh, both wrestlers looked really good in the ring. And hopefully this is a sign to come with the AEW Women's Division. It's been pretty good throughout. And it was another solid match to build upon that. Um, in the end, it was Rio who eventually hit the tilt -the world for the win. Then her and uh, Sakura celebrated um, uh, with good, like, good sportsmanship after the match. Um, after that, we had Cody with MJF in his corner versus Chris Jericho with Jake Hager in his corner for the AEW Championship. Stipulation of this match was if Cody could not beat Jericho, he would never challenge for the AEW Championship again. And this was the match of the night to this point. It was fantastic. Story was great. Uh, action in the ring was great. It delivered pretty much every way you could have asked for this match to deliver. Um, so we also had Dean Malenko, Arn Anderson, and a great Muda at ringside as judges. I guess it, like the time limit was reached and there was no clear winner. Uh, so we start off with it was Jericho's birthday. No saying F your birthday to Jericho. So he flips off the crowd. Uh, big suicide dive by Cody, and then Cody went up clotheslining Jericho from the ring to the ramp. And the ramp was like even with the ring at this point. It was like kind of like old WCW. So instead of like hopping up to the ring from the ramp, the ramp was parallel to or even with the ring. So Cody clotheslines Jericho over the top rope, goes for a suicide dive, 
whisk and just eats it on the ramp. And he is, his face, is, when he pops up, is all bloody. Uh, he had a nasty cut like above his eyebrow. Looks like it required staples or stitches or something. It stopped the match a little bit while he was getting looked at because this was not a blade job. He legitimately, uh, he legitimately ate the ramp and was just bleeding all over the place. Um, Jericho would then take control after. Cody would go for a moonsault and miss, and then Jericho would go for a lion salt, but Cody would counter that and hit a springboard diamond cutter, which was really cool. Uh, Mrs. Rhodes, uh, Cody's mom, was actually at ringside and slapped Jericho in the face, and she was like, F you. So I was like, this is nuts. Uh, comparing this to the current WWE product, night and day. Uh, so after that, uh, we had Jake Hager providing interference for Jericho throughout the match. He was eventually tossed from ringside to former Jack Swagger. Um, Jericho would clock Cody with the belt, throwing all that ejection chaos, and it would, you know, pay a tribute to Eddie Guerrero, who would clock Cody with the belt, get rid of the evidence, and lay down. It's like he got hit. Uh, he went for the pin, but Cody was able to kick out. Uh, Jericho would then go for a juice effect, but Cody would counter that into a crossroads. I thought that was the end of the match, especially with the stipulation of how Cody would never challenge for the title again. I thought that juice effect counter to the crossroads was going to be it. No, Jericho kicks out. Cody would hit a bionic elbow pin tribute to his dad, Dusty. Jericho kicked out again. Uh, Rose would then go for a disaster kick, but Jericho countered into a code breaker. And then uh, Jericho was wearing this like muscle belly, took that off, started whipping Cody with it. And then he put Cody into the lion tamer and repeatedly stomped on his head. And it got too much for MJF, Cody's protege at this point to watch. So he throws in the towel. That's it. Match is over. Jericho is still your AEW champ. Oh, wait, there's more. Post-match shenanigans go on. MJF is in the ring to Padre and Cody, Cody saying like he was looking out for his well-being. He couldn't stand seeing him in the Lion Tamer, having his head stomped in the mat. It looks like Cody forgives him. And MJF hits him with a low blow. A, a great heel turn at the end of that match. Like a nice little twist, little swerve. You kind of feel like it was coming. I mean, they were playing it off. Like it looked like they were going to maybe like just walk up the ramp together. It was like that tension and MJF just hit the low blow on, on Cody, shoves him to the mat, walks up the ramp, and then as he like walks back up the ramp, he looks back at the ring and smiles. A fan actually threw like his beer or a drink or whatever at MJF, caught on camera, like right in front of the camera. He gets hit with this, is soaked. Kudos to MJF for keeping his cool. I'm surprised he didn't like jump down the ramp and start beating the crap out of the fan. Fan was I think was repeatedly ejected from the arena after that incident, but yeah. Cody loses to Jericho, can never challenge for the AEW title, never challenge for the AEW title again, because MJF throws in a towel, then MJF turns on Cody after the match. After that, we had the Lights Out non-sanctioned match in your main event, John Moxley taking on Kenny Omega, a rivalry that has been brewing since Memorial Day weekend at um, All In when John Moxley made his AEW debut and attacked Kenny Omega and Chris Jericho during the main event at that pay-per-view. This was supposed to happen a couple months earlier, could not because Moxley had a MRSA infection, so they had to push this match all the way back until November. It's like a four-month build-up to, a uh, three-month, four-month build-up, whatever, uh, to this point. And uh, it had a lot of hype to live up to. The, Jer the promos these guys were cutting on each other were fantastic. And um, it was lights out, non-sanctioned, because once the lights went out, the pay-per-view was over when they come back on. This was not an officially AEW sanctioned match, so anything went, and it did not count on either man's win, win or loss record. It was kind of stupid, and Moxley made a point that he did not like. And yeah, so let's get into it. Uh, it started off with Moxley using a trash can as a weapon. Uh, they would eventually fight through the crowd. Um, Omega had this sweet spot where he jumped over the barricade and just like drop kicked Moxley right in the chest, and they were fighting in the crowd. Uh, Moxley would get hit with this trash can shot from Omega. Not like the steel trash can you see in the ring. This is like an arena trash can, one of those big classic ones. He was using that as a weapon. Eventually, they make their way back to the ringside area. Moxley got out of his barbed wire bat and hit a few dingers on the back of Omega. And he was just like smashing this bat onto the back of Omega. Like, oh my gosh, that looked very painful. Um, he would then take the bat onto Omega's arm. And then Omega would counter that by blasting Moxley on the head with a trash can. And then Pyle drove him onto the trash can. And then he set up a table on the outside. Omega set a table on the outside of the ring. We'll get to that later. And he got out his broom. He is the cleaner after all. Got out his broom covered with barbed wire. And was sweeping the back of Moxley. And then stomping on the broom on the back of Moxley. Uh, Moxley would then smash a fan in the... Or uh, smash... Moxley then went for a suicide dive. But Omega hit him in the back of the head with the uh, barbed wire broom. And it looked very painful. Like... So as Moxie's got coming through the ropes, 
Mega takes a broom, smashes it on the back, and his back of his neck, back of his head, is just bleeding like crazy. It was nuts. Um, Omega goes for a moonsault while holding the trash can. He hit the moonsault, but the trash can actually mixed, missed Moxley. Um, it would have been a sick spot if it actually connected. It was still looking cool seeing Omega do a moonsault with holding a trash can. And even though it missed, it looked really cool, but uh, did not get the full effect of the trash can um, on Moxley with Omega on top of the trash can. Uh, eventually, Omega pulled out a board with a ton of mousetraps on it. This was crazy. I'd never seen that before. Uh, he slides in the ring. All these mousetraps are set on this board. They're not serving well as Moxie was able to capitalize and just dropped Omega onto the board. You hear the mousetraps going off. That looks super painful. Um, Omega was later um, in a rear naked choke by Moxley. And uh, he was able to counter that by hitting Mox in the head with like straight up trash can lid shots to the Moxie's head repeatedly. Uh, which we've never seen in WWE <laughs> because of the CTE uh, thing going on right now. Uh, eventually there was this big gold chain going out and Mox was whipping Omega with that chain. Uh, Omega, and then Omega was actually hanging Moxley from the ring with the chain around his neck. Uh, it's, oh my god, <laughs> this, like, there was, this is like ECW hardcore wrestling stuff we saw from the late 90s. And uh, yeah, it was brutal, brilliant violence of, as Moxley said on Wednesday Night Dynamite. Um, later on, Omega hit a senton out of the ring to Moxley through the table, which is a very cool spot. Um, and then Omega goes out of the ring, he gets his bag, everybody's taking his thumbtacks, he pulls out a shard of glass, apparently it's the glass from the table that Moxie dropped him through in the first episode of Wednesday Night Dynamite, and he just like stomps on the glass shards, breaks it all up, pours it in the ring, I mean this is crazy stuff. Um, so Omega plants Moxie onto the pile of broken glass with the sky high, he then had Moxie in a sharpshooter, but Moxie crawls through the ring, through the glass, to get to the ropes to break this hold, like, wow, that is a great image, great story, like, every weapon in this match had, like, a piece of the story which made this match brilliant, made these the weapons brilliant, it wasn't just a weapon for the sake of a weapon, like, it served a purpose, and that glass um, was a prime example of that. Eventually, Omega puts pieces of glass, uh, Moxie your German suplex Omega onto the glass, and then Omega would put glass in Moxie's, Moxie's mouth and, like, kick him in the face. Uh, Omega would drive a screwdriver or an ice pick or whatever into Moxie's head as Moxie's trying to like crawl up the ramp to the main entrance area. Uh, and eventually they get to, they're at the top of the stage, they're fighting, Omega calls for the Young Bucks and Adam Page to bring out this bed frame it looked like, this big old bed frame with barbed wire up and down and side to side. It's just like a bed of barbed wire and the crowd's like ooh and on and gasping at this. Um, looks like um, Omega was going to try and hit the uh, one winged angel. Onto Moxley, onto the barbed wire. Moxley counters, superplexes. They both go off the ramp onto the barbed wire bed. Unbelievable spot. Looked unbelievably painful. Eventually, Omega hit a high knee to Moxley through this like AEW logo light thing by the stage. They both go through it. And they're still fighting. This match is going on for like 30 minutes at this point, and they're still fighting. They make their way back to the ring. Moxley hits a, a paradigm shift, but Omega kicks out. Moxie then removes the ring padding on the actual ring so he exposes the wooden boards that are actually under the padding on top of the ring. Um, Omega will hit a paradigm shift on Moxie on the wood. Moxley kicks out. Omega climbs to the rope, tries to go for a Phoenix Splash on a Moxie on the wood. Moxie gets out of the way. Omega eats the wood hard. He's got like a cut on his face at this point. Um, this allows Moxie to hit the paradigm shift onto Omega, onto the wood for the pin and the win. John Moxley beats Kenny Omega in one of the craziest hardcore matches I've seen in a long time. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I was watching this with my fiance. She could not. She was enjoying it, but she couldn't. She doesn't like blood and stuff, but she was into the violent stuff here, and it was just like great. I mean, we were promised um, unsanctioned, violent wrestling glory by John Moxley in that promo, and both these guys delivered. The match was already like. Unbelievably hyped up because of the build up for it. The fact that it's John Moxley versus Kenny Omega and these two guys surpassed the hype. Match of the night, in my opinion. I loved it. Great way to end a solid pay per view from AEW Full Gear. Watch it if you can, um, if you did not watch it. And if you did watch it, rewatch it. A lot of great stuff on here. The matches were solid throughout. Best matches of the night by far, in my opinion. Jericho versus Cody Rhodes and then Moxley versus Omega stole the show. Um, AEW Full Gear, great, great show. And we'll see where everything goes from here on Wednesday Night Dynamite. 
As for me, that's all I got for you. Like, feel free, to, feel free to get a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel, check out my website, cincyfanzone.blogspot.com. Give me a follow on Twitter and on Instagram, both those are at cincyfanzone. Links to all that is in the description below. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.